Today's project, I'm going to have you come inside of one of our new builds and I'm going to show you how to install a new pre-hung door. So when you're installing a door, first thing you want to do is take your level, uh, find out if the frame has been done properly. <laughs> Generally speaking, the door frame is usually two inches wider than the size that's indicated on your door. So we have a 24 inch door and a 26 inch hole. We have half inch jam material, which gives us a little bit of play in case it's not perfectly square. Um, we're pretty decently level, which is fine. Now our door is going to go in the hole here and our jam material You can see I've got good play, so we're going to be absolutely fine. So before we install our door, it's important to know what your finished flooring is going to be because we're doing it at an early phase. This floor is going to be tiled, so before we tile we have to add 5 8 plywood. We have 5 8 here, 5 8 plywood, that's inch and a quarter. That's the basic amount of flooring needed in Ontario to cover any kind of terry on warranty. Don't install it with anything less. So we're going to put 5 8 shim there, install our door on top of it. That way, once we've installed our plywood and tile, we still have a proper gap at the bottom of the door. Once you have your door in place, you open up the swing, and then you just lift the door and the jam until it's somewhat flush with your frame, and then pack a bunch of shims underneath to carry the weight of the door. And this makes it very easy to do by yourself. The next thing we do is we're gonna take our shims, put them in behind the jam on the hinge side, and we want to make that one perfectly level. So, once you've got your door in position, you take a shim and you want to put shims in behind the door coming from two different directions. That way, if your, if your wall is for square and you put your shims in from different directions, you keep even spacing inside and outside the door. You don't get the frame twisting. If you put all the shims from one direction, you'll get a twisted frame and your door won't function properly. So we're going to throw the shim in from each direction just till it's snug. We're going to add ourselves a screw and effectively where the door stop is going to be installed later and it'll cover the screws. So I'm going to be using this here just to get it perfectly flush with the wall. Done. And we'll do that same process in each hinge up the side of the door. Like with any construction, framers are trying to get something done, give or take. They don't use nice six foot long levels. They're not concerned about everything being perfectly level. They're just trying to get close. <laughs> it's the finishing where you have to be perfect. So what we do is we put our level up against the jam and identify roughly the space that we need, which is, you know, three eighths to a half an inch, which is normal. So that's nice because I can put one shim in from the top one side and then from the other side. You'll notice I've got one shim set above the, the, the hinge and one shim set below the hinge. And I put my level from each of those two locations. Wow, I don't think that would get much better if I tried. If you're working alone, again, take the shim, use it like a straight edge, go across the corner, drywall the drywall, make sure your jam is in contact, all right? Hold that jam. You've got your screw set. Now hold your shims. Otherwise, when the screw grabs the wood, it'll spin it around. It might cause an accident. Get the shims in, go in different directions. Put the level up from shim to shim, not just at the bottom. Okay, make sure you cover both of the shims. And then we're just gonna push this until the, the gap is completely closed. Now here it's closed at the top and not at the bottom. So we're gonna adjust for a new location. Because we're dealing with wood. There we go. You might find that putting a shim lower down is better than putting it higher up. If you're dealing with MDF, it's not quite so particular, but with wood, 
Same thing, you take your screw where the door jam is going to be, hold your shims. There's that side. Done. So now at this point, we don't need to have the shims supporting the door anymore. We can just take these out, put them back in our pile here for use. Then we close the door and check to see if the jam's in the right spot. So now we know we're installing a door involving all the laws of carpentry, square, level, and flush. So we're level on the jam side. We're square because the door is built that way. We're flush because we're using our shims to get our jam and the drywall together. Over here, what we have to do now is make sure that the door has a consistent gap. So we're full 1 8 here and we're rubbing. So we come down here to the shim. And this is where having these shims underneath the door is really handy. Because you can just keep adjusting this until you get it right. The door, perfect. There we go. So now we're going to do the same thing again. Only we're going to take our shims and we're going to start from the top and work our way down. So you're continually just working your way around the frame of the door. If you have any problems, you just take one step backwards because that's where you ran into your problem. All right, this one's the easiest because the jam is already attached. So same thing, we'll put one from the other side. And then one from this side. Until we're happy. And then we have to open the door so we can put a screw in it. Same thing, you gotta move the jam until it's flush, go corner to corner on the drywall. Okay, the door is an inch and a half thick. Put the screw where the door stop is gonna go. Hold your shims. And then proceed to try about the middle. And line up about the same amount of gap. And Make sure it's flush. And then put another screw. Important to note, when you're putting in your screw, remember that when you're adding these shims to set the thickness, you want it to be just a little bit tighter than the last spot that you worked on because when you put the screw in, it will compress those shims and it'll actually be a bigger hole than you thought was gonna be there by about a 32nd of an inch. But if you like to make things perfect like me, that's important. Okay, so this framing is a little twisted at the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put both shims coming from the same direction so that this door jam doesn't get twisted when we're done. Nice and square, I like that. Okay, so now you've got your door installed. The last step that you have is to take your door stop, place it on the inside, put it in with your brad nailer, and then just do your trim work. Only other thing to do is when you're finished, just cut the shims off. Little score, 